What I want to do to, to start things off, to have our welcome, is have my boss, Dr. Kim Harrington, who is now the, the Associate Vice President for the newly formed Arts, Belonging, and Community Division here on campus. So you probably have all heard about that. Well, this is Dr. Kim Harrington, who is the Direct, or not director, vice president, or associate vice president. Get it right. All right, Kim, come on up, thanks. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here, delighted to see you. It is my distinct pleasure um, to welcome you today as we celebrate, celebrate and commemorate this Veterans Walk of Honor. You know, last year in 2023, Veterans Resource Center, a department, as they've indicated, within ABC, which is also an element of student engagement and well-being, um, really celebrated 10 years of service. So 10 years of dedicated service to our veteran students. And so Trinitech has a really distinguished history of supporting active duty veterans, um, spanning over a century. So in 1917, July, the School of Military Aeronautics established, was established and trained military veterans. And so Georgia Tech's history and support of veterans runs, runs pretty deep. The Veterans Resource Center began in 2012, when Georgia Tech established really what was a student veteran work group to provide support and create a sense of belonging and community for student veterans on campus. That was the goal was to increase campus involvement and promote awareness around student veterans. As a result of the efforts, the Veterans Resource Center opened in se on September 9th of 2013. And so that was under the leadership of Dave Ross, with the support of Dean Ray and Dean Stein. So thank you for that. And then with the financial support of two very generous donors, the Veterans Resource Center opened just down the way at this new beautiful location in August of 2020. So thank you for that as well. You know, the Veterans Resource Center represents our commitment to fostering an inclusive and supportive environment for all of our student veterans. We acknowledge the unique challenges and experience and opportunities that they may face as they transition from military life to this academic life. And so the goal there is to provide resources and support to make sure that they have um, the community and support that they need to be successful here at Georgia Tech. It's also important to make sure that the community recognizes their unique value their unique contributions and values those is what we do so in abc belonging is at the heart of what we do belonging right so again you, if you hear me talk about this it it matters to know that you matter somewhere so knowing that you belong and that you matter somewhere is really important so all of us in abc we strive to create a community where every individual all students regardless of their background or experience feel experience and know what it's like to belong our student veterans, with their diverse skills and experience, enrich the fabric of our university community. The Veterans Walk of Honor ceremony holds a special place in our hearts as it marks the recognition of the commitment and sacrifice of our veterans and symbolizes Georgia Tech's rich military history. Today, we come together to acknowledge and express our deepest appreciation for the individuals who have dedicated their lives defending the principles that we hold dear. As we prepare to unveil this Veterans Walk of Honor display today, I'd like us to take a moment to reflect on the impact that our veterans have had on our community and our nation. Their courage, resilience, and unwavering commitment serve as a beacon and inspiration for all of us. This display serves as a tribute to the sacrifices made, the challenges overcome, and the triumph of the, whole, of the human spirit. So without further ado, I'd like you to join me in welcoming President Angel Cabrera, our 12th president of Georgia Tech, to the podium to share some comments about this momentous occasion. President Cabrera. Thank you all for uh, being uh, here today. The, the history of the, uh, Georgia Tech is intertwined with the history of the, of the U.S. military. It, it's nothing new. It goes back to the, to the 19th uh, the 19th century. Uh, we have, uh, as, as long as there's been a Georgia Tech, we have been incredibly proud of educating uh, new leaders in the military, of supporting those leaders with the right technologies to keep them safe and to make sure they can do their job on behalf of uh, everybody else. And we've also, have a, as, as long as we've existed, we've also served our military by welcome, welcoming them back to school 
to make sure that the unique skills that they have acquired uh, during service can have a second or a third or a fourth round of service in other uh, sectors of our, of our society. We are not just proud of that history, but we are incredibly, incredibly grateful for every member of our community who is currently serving or that has served in any branch of the U.S. military. So what we're doing today and what we're opening today is one way for us to say thank you, to recognize you, to honor those who came before us, to inspire others, students. We're gonna walk this beautiful plaza, we're gonna come across some of those signs and who may be inspired to serve themselves. So this is, a, this is a, a big deal and I am incredibly, incredibly proud of being uh, celebrating that with you, uh, with you today. Um, uh, as I said right now, just to give you some, some data points, we have about 1,000 military-connected students at Tech and about 150 active duty service members, just to put a, a little bit of a scale in, in how strong that connection is today. Uh, we also maintain, as you know, productive partnership with Dobbins Air Reserve Base and, and uh, Robbins Air Force Base, and of course, hundreds of millions of dollars every year come from all branches of the Department of Defense to the Georgia Tech Research Institute and some other research projects throughout the Institute to develop new technologies that help our military protect our freedoms. There are uh, seven of uh, the 12 presidents we've had. I am um, delighted to point out that they also had uh, military uh, careers. They weren't veterans. We, uh, of course, have uh, it, it, the, the, the list is so long of the unbelievable vet veterans who have enriched the history of this place. But I'll mention a few. I mentioned uh, Rupert Barnett Jr., a Georgia Tech student who was killed in action in 1944 while driving Nazi forces out of Eastern France. He died just a few months before the end of the war and before he would have graduated uh, from Georgia Tech. Uh, for the last two years, we have a new tradition in our, in our campus in, in France, uh, which uh, uh, my friend, uh, which I, I will uh, introduce to the, to the podium in a second, uh, Mike Shannon, also got to, to experience where our students studying at Georgia Tech Europe in Metz, France, they go and visit Rupert Barnett and honor his service and the service of everybody else. General uh, Breedlove, the former commander of U.S. European Command, now a distinguished professor of the practice in the Ivan Allen College. First Lieutenant uh, Tyler Brown, the Army Ranger who earned dual bachelor's degrees at Tech, was elected class of 2001 student body president and was killed in action in Iraq in 2004. Admiral Sandy Winnefeld, Chair of the President's Intelligence Advisory Board and former Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who also teaches at Georgia Tech, and he's been a very active member of the Georgia Tech Advisory Board and now the Georgia Tech Foundation. Captain John Young, one of the Navy's greatest test pilots and the most experienced astronaut of all time, one of only 12 people to walk on the moon. Actually, he rallied, he, he drove uh, a, a crazy boogie on top of the, the dunes and he came back. And uh, I have the proof, the graphic proof in my office. He came back, he has now officially, he, uh, officially named a crater. It's called the Wreck. I kid you not, I have the photo, the official photo uh, from NASA in my, in my, in my office. I can, I can spend all day, which will be kind of fun. Uh, uh, telling you a little bit more of that, of that list. But, um, that legacy includes five Medal of Honor recipients, Captain David McCampbell, uh, Major Thomas McGuire, General Raymond Davis, General Leonard Wood, and, and Colonel uh, Ralph uh, Puckett Jr. Now, I'm proud to say that thanks to the Walk of Honor, uh, these five are now permanently memorialized in the display, which we will unveil in a minute. And here uh, to tell us uh, about their uh, conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of life above and beyond the call of duty is our next speaker, 
my former colleague, well, actually, now you are my colleague in a different way, and my dear friend, which is the president of North Georgia, University of North Georgia, Mike Shannon. Uh, Mike is, like myself, a proud two-time uh, alum of uh, Georgia Tech, a nuclear engineer, a decorated 20-year veteran of the U.S. Army. And before he left to lead our state's senior military college, he spent seven and a half years working for us as a researcher, administrator, and faculty member. Uh, he is, as uh, all of you know, a constant and devoted advocate for veterans and service members. He was one of the leaders that I mentioned earlier who recognized the need for better space to honor our heroes. He knew our campus needed a place where our community could celebrate our veterans and learn about their sacrifices and contributions, a place designed to encourage and inspire future leaders. During his last year and a half at Georgia Tech, uh, he led the charge to create the Walk of Honor, and I am incredibly grateful uh, that he could be with us today uh, to celebrate its official opening. Along with Mike, I also want to extend my sincere thanks to John and Susan Trendley for supporting the Veterans Resource Center, uh, to David Ross uh, for running this vital program and supporting our student veterans, and to Kerry Brown, the father of First Lieutenant Tyler Brown, for being with us here to honor our heroes together. And with that, please welcome University of North Georgia President and Georgia Tech alum, Mike Shannon, to the podium. Well, good morning. Good morning. And hey, that's a fine looking University of North Georgia cadet. You're in for a treat, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but thank you to my dear friend, uh, my former boss and mentor, and uh, all of you that are still mad, you can blame President Cabrera because he helped me uh, with the process of becoming a president. So this is your fault, by the way. Um, but uh, first and foremost, greetings from Dahlonega, Georgia, where it is colder than it is here. So don't complain about how cold it is out today. Uh, and I bring you greetings from the University of North Georgia. So I'm proud to say, despite my alma mater uh, being founded in the 1880s, uh, the University of North Georgia was founded in 1873. So it's one of our oldest institutions in our state, not older than the little dog school, but uh, a <laughs> little, little far behind. Uh, and we are a university of nearly 19,000 students uh, across five campuses. And one of the things that we are very incredibly proud of is being uh, the Military College of Georgia and the Army Senior Military College. So in federal law, there are six designated senior military colleges and four service academies. We are one of them in your state. And if you don't know that, I'm gonna fix it on my time uh, in the present uh, role there. And uh, we're incredibly proud of the work we do. Uh, next to West Point, we commission the most officers in America every year. Uh, so West Point obviously uh, commissions uh, about 1,000 and we commission a little over 100 every year. Uh, so that is a proud work that we do and we're the only all Army senior military colleges. So the other ones, uh, Virginia Military Institute, uh, Texas A&M, uh, Norwich, the Citadel, and Virginia Tech also commission uh, Air Force uh, Marines uh, and Navy, Navy officers, but we just commission Army officers. So greetings from them, and you're in for a treat. I told Dave, the only way I'm coming is if I can bring the Blue Ridge Rifles, and David said, yeah, bring the Blue Ridge Rifles, so you're in for a treat. Uh, you're going to get to see uh, our cadets. Uh, folks, what I want to talk about today is intersections. Uh, and I, I want to share with you a couple of things that uh, I think are, are important as we, as we do this today. Um, this is a really special project, and it's an intersection. Um, and for me, I worked on a lot of things. And this guy is not short of ideas, if y'all haven't figured that out yet. Uh, every time we would go for a walk, there was a new idea. Uh, and so lots of exciting things we worked on around here, Science Square, Art Square, uh, all of these projects. 
Uh, but this one really was incredibly special to me uh, because of who I am. I am first and foremost an American soldier. Uh, that is who I am when I introduce myself to somebody. Uh, that is who I am and that's what I will always be. So this was really, really exciting and cool for me. Um, but, but let me step back a minute and set up the first intersection. Um, you know, Georgia Tech has a long tradition, as, as the president talked about, of serving uh, in, this, in this area. We have a long history uh, and everything Georgia Tech does is excellent, uh, it is awesome. Uh, and as the president likes to say, and I will help brag about my alma mater, uh, we are national champions in so many things. Um, even the little dogs aren't yet anymore. That's so great, by the way. Um, what? I'm not a yellow jacket? Come on. Uh, and so, uh, but, you know, we are excellent in our academics. We are excellent in our research. We have Nobel laureates. We have five of these Medal of Honor winners. Uh, we're world champions. As the president likes to say, we are world champions in so many things here. Uh, but we are also world champions in athletics. Heisman, Dodd, these names that resonate. Butker, Harrison Butker, our guy, still kicking field goals uh, at a high level. Uh, but what we are really world champions is, is our service to our nation. And so the intersection I want to talk about is that service today uh, and, and our connection to that. But let me just give you, the president gave you some data, let me give you a couple more data points so that you know. Uh, there are about 335 million people in America today. We're growing. Uh, and that number will continue to grow. Uh, does anyone know how many veterans there are? About 16.2, 16.5 million veterans. So that means less than 5% of our population has ever, has ever had the courage to raise their hand and serve. And I look around the room and I see a lot of friends, and I see a lot of friends who served. And so this is an incredibly small group of people who are asked to do some of the hardest things for our country. To go and move their families all around the world to work on Christmas. I will not tell you how many Christmases I missed. To live in other places while your family's in another. Uh, and to potentially die. Uh, and as we know, uh, that is the service of a veteran and a service member. And so today I wanna to talk about how some of these intersections come together. And I'll try to do this without getting emotional because it's hard, it's very difficult. So yellow jackets and veterans are a connection. They're an intersection. Uh, best example we have is the heroism of Tyler Brown. It's good to see you, Mr. Brown. Tyler Brown, a young man who did it all here, did it all here at a high level, double major, uh, incredible cadet as in ROTC, SGA president. I mean, he did it all. And what he also did was he said, I'll go, send me. And he went overseas and he didn't come home. That's an intersection. Uh, another one is these five Medal of Honor winners that the president mentioned. You know what's pretty cool? I don't know if you know these, these names, uh, but two of them are names for some of the largest military installations in America. Leonard Wood, Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, and McGuire in New Jersey. That's pretty neat. Two Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Uh, and then last year, many of you remember, we were honored right around the corner here to have Ralph Puckett with us. Ralph is still alive, still in Columbus. Uh, and uh, of course, he won the Medal of Honor during the Korean War another, or for his service during the Korean War, another intersection. Uh, let me share with you something that happened to me last summer, uh, and it was, it was incredibly exciting. So the president sent me to Europe. I think it was my farewell tour. Uh, Twist my arm, had to go to France for a week. It was, it, was, it was incredible. By the way, if you haven't been to our campus in France, uh, it is amazing, and the work that we're doing over there at Georgia Tech Europe. And so I went over there, and one of the things I did was we got a group of students uh, and we went to two places uh, and we visited seven yellow jackets. 
across those places. And then the culmination was we took about 80 students to Lorraine and visited Rupert Barnett. But let me tell you about what we did on the front end of that. We went first to Normandy. And if you haven't been there, you all need to go. Every American needs to go and walk those beaches. You need to go. Just go. Well, do I need a tour guide? Mike? no, you just drive up. It's not fancy, by the way. You just drive up and you walk and you remember. And afterwards, we went up on the hill and up on the hill overlooking that beautiful ocean is Normandy American Cemetery. And many of you saw that cemetery in Saving Private Ryan. That was the cemetery in the beginning of the movie. And let me tell you, we, we, visited, we visited five Yellow Jackets there. Let me tell you about one. And his name was Edward Fambro. Edward Fambro. So Edward was born in 1916 in Quitman, Georgia. Anybody ever been to Quitman? It's a quick turn through Quitman. You're not there for very long. In Quitman, Georgia. He came to Georgia Tech. He was a member of the track team. And he was in the T-Club. Anybody old enough here to have been in the T-Club? That's a long time ago, Dean, right? I don't think we've had that for a long time. But that was a big deal back in those days. He was a member of the T-Club. He, he graduated with a bachelor's in IM, uh, which was a very big degree at the time, uh, in 1939. And he moved to Chattanooga. And he, he got into the insurance business. He started selling insurance. And in December of 1943, the 19th to be exact, one week before Christmas, he got married. And then in the spring of 1944, he went to Europe to serve. And you know what he was? He was a glider pilot. And you know what he did? He flew paratroopers in to D-Day. And he didn't come back because his glider never made it. And so near St. Dumas, he died on June 7th, 1944, uh, as a result of his glider. He did safely exit his paratroopers, but his glider, and he never made it back. When you go to Normandy American Cemetery, go see Edward Fambro, a yellow jacket. The other intersection I want to share with you is we went to Luxembourg. By the way, I got a speeding ticket. But I did pay it. I did pay it. Don't speed in France. They got cameras everywhere. Uh, I was minding my own business. It was in the Georgia Tech car, too. It was a, anyway, <laughs> Chancellor knows. I, t I turned myself in. Chancellor knows. It's all good. We paid the ticket. So we go up to Luxembourg. And one of the famous parts of Luxembourg is the cemeteries where General Patton's buried. So that's a big deal. He's got his own thing. Everybody knows him. But guess who else is in Luxembourg American Cemetery? Roy Kessler. So Roy Kessler was from Atlanta. And he graduated in the class of 1940 in the burgeoning field of textile engineering. We used to be really good at that too. Textile engineering, class of 1940. He was in the Tal Epsilon fraternity while he was here. And he was an incredibly active student, and his yearbook entry is full of so many things that he did, like so many of these other yellow jackets. And so he went on to join the Army, and he was an officer. And he was in the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. And he trained at a little place called Tocoa, Georgia. Anybody ever seen the Band of Brothers? He was one of them, one of those people, not Tom Hanks, with all due respect. Uh, Steven Spielberg did the work. He was one of those soldiers trained right there in Tocoa, Georgia, uh, and went to the war. Um, he was a pathfinder. And back in that day, it was a big deal to figure out where to drop soldiers from an airplane in airborne operations. And on D-Day, as a member of the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment, he was the first guy out of the fifth plane going into Normandy. Y'all have seen these films, right? All of these planes coming in and the gunfire is coming. He was the first guy out the door on the fifth plane. And thankfully, he landed and he fought. 
and he fought bravely there, and he was a commander, he was a captain. And he went on, and guess what? He did it again. So he went up to Holland, and if you guys remember the, the history of the 101st Airborne Division, they started with D-Day, they went into Holland, and then over to Belgium. And in, so in Holland, he jumped into what was known as Operation Market Garden. That was the second time he did what I just described. As the guns were blazing, he jumped out of the airplane, number one jumper in the door on the third aircraft. And unfortunately, he then went to Belgium, and many of you know this as the Battle of the Bulge. And so in January 1945, after doing all of that, he was killed in the woods in Belgium in the Battle of the Bulge. So me and our five students went to see Roy Kessler. And what was really exciting about, what was neat about Roy Kessler was he was of the Jewish faith. And I don't know if you know anything about these cemeteries, they have different symbology. And so uh, his was the Star of David. And uh, uh, it was an incredibly emotional event for me and these five students, uh, many of them in our Scheller College of Business. Intersections. So when we go out here today, we're going to see all of this, and we're going to we're going to rec we're going to recognize certain folks. Uh, but I want you to know there's hundreds of these stories, and the president told a few, and I told a few. There are hundreds of these of yellow jackets and the intersection of Georgia Tech and military service and doing something bigger than themselves. And sometimes we don't tell stories about. Uh, and I see some guys in the back row here who are yellow jackets who made it back, thank God, and are okay, but have that service. I wanna talk about Greg, but he'll get mad at me. Uh, but Greg was in the initial attack in Operation Desert Storm next to H.R. McMaster. If you don't know anything about this, you need to read the book as they were going into that battle. Just story after story. And so why was this project important to me? Because we need to have a place where every human being that comes to this campus knows the commitment of Yellow Jackets to service, the commitment of Yellow Jackets to America. Yes, we're national champions. Yes, we have Dodd and Heisman. And yes, we have Butker and Calvin Johnson and, and, and all of these, these folks. And yes, we have Nobel laureates, but we have American heroes who spilled their blood for this country and represented this place in such an incredibly special way, intersections. And so that's the reason when he gave me the green light, I was like, we're not, get, we're not moving until we get done. And the thing I, last thing I said when I walked out the door this summer is, y'all better get that thing done. And so I'm really, really excited, and thanks Dave for allowing me the opportunity to come back and, and share with you today. And so what we did, just so if you don't know the, 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 the kind of the, 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 the last thing, I'll explain to you how this came together. Um, we were looking, many of these memorials have been around for a long time, and many of them were located uh, on North Avenue in front of uh, the Wardlaw building. And so as we were working through strategy around the growth of athletics, um, it was clear that we were going to need to relocate those placards uh, as we think about North Avenue and you all know what's going on out there now. That's where like the pregame is and all this stuff. And it just didn't seem to be an appropriate place to leave those. So as we started to do it, Dave and I started to talk and we said, let's get something exciting for our veterans. Let's work on this together. So you're going to see a bunch of aspects out here that are incredibly Georgia Tech. There's Morse code. If you don't know Morse code, you're all yellow jackets. You can figure it out. Uh, there's tributes to every service. Uh, there's tributes to our Medal of Honor, uh, and there's tributes to the values that the military holds dear. And so there were a whole lot of people that helped with that. Many of them are gathered here today who helped us think through how do we properly represent this, this type of a thing. We didn't want it to be too Hollywood. We didn't want it to be too much. We just wanted it to be impactful and special. And so I want to thank all of those. And I don't know, is Jason... Um, Jason or Dan, uh, Jerry, uh, those are the folks in the facilities group that did a lot of the work of figuring out how to do this. 
Um, incredibly grateful to Mr. Brown for all your help, to the Tranleys for all your continued help uh, with this. Uh, and I want to lay a challenge before I go. This isn't it. This was the first step. And so there's another piece that I hope, and I would love to continue to work on it as a Yellow Jacket alum, that we can continue to finish, that we can continue to pay tribute uh, through technology. Because you can't, there's not enough placards to tell these stories. Uh, and so with some technology, I think we can tell these stories uh, for, you know, we want our young students to see these stories. We want our young students to understand uh, that they're at a university that's about service, that's about honor, that's about integrity. And so I'm incredibly honored to be here. Uh, thank you for, for the opportunity, President Cabrera. Um, it's, a, it's a special day for Georgia Tech. And I challenge everyone to this, go home today and tell somebody about this. Go tell all your friends, go tell all your colleagues, let's make this a, a, a special place, but a big deal. It's like when you visit Georgia Tech, just don't go to the Rec Garage. That was another cool project that we worked on. You need to go to the Veterans Walk of Honor and see the work and the mission uh, and the impact of Georgia Tech. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here and thank you for honoring uh, our veterans. God bless America. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Bobby. I'm a third year civil engineering student here at Tech and as I mentioned, the president of the Veterans Association, Student Veterans Association. I'm honored to be here today as we come together to celebrate the opening of this Walk of Honor. And as a student veteran with five years in, of experience in the Coast Guard as a damage controlman before coming here to Tech, I can't emphasize enough how grateful we are as student veterans to have a campus that cares so much about its student veterans and honors its past, present, and hopefully future service members. Georgia Tech's rich military history is interwoven with fantastic stories that we've been over today. And it's incredibly amazing that Georgia Tech honors it. I've been to other campuses that don't met, support their veterans, but don't have memorials, don't publicly acknowledge them nearly as much as Georgia Tech. I'd like to express my sincere appreciation for the unwavering support of David Ross and the Veterans Resource Center. Having a place on campus for us veterans who are very non-traditional students to come hang out with other veterans that understand what it's like to have weird hours, be adults in a classroom with a lot of younger students, and in general not be traditional students is fantastic. It provides a sense of community that we otherwise wouldn't have. And working with the Student Veterans Association, we hope to continue to grow that. The addition of the Walk of Honor serves as a daily reminder of the service and sacrifice of our fellow Yellow Jackets. And as I said, I hopeful, I'm very hopeful that it inspires others to serve like we did and helps us remember why we served and why we're back and how lucky we are to be back. Thank you once again to David Ross and everyone from the Student Veterans Association in general and all the veterans that couldn't make it today. We are very grateful. Thank you. Mission to honor Georgia Tech's veterans, sir. Thank you, sir. Honor. Oh. permission to exit your drill area, sir. Well done, carry on. Thank you, sir. Honor! Oh! Yeah. Right, hopefully...
Hopefully these come down pretty easy. We'll see. All right, I appreciate everybody coming out. So at the on my count, we're gonna unveil the Veterans Walk of Honor. All right, we're ready. Three, two, one. <laughs>